Here we go. Stream marker. Hey guys, new video here. I've done a few hundred logbooks. I'd like to share my experiences with the boys. Okay, first, first question. How do you find good logbooks? Okay, well, you think about this. Think about your favorite zones and you're going to type them in. For me, I love Whale Temple. I love this thing. So I type this in here. I'm first going to show you how to trade for them at very cheap prices, okay? So I like this layout. This is my absolute favorite layout. But let's say you also like Reef, okay? So you type this in and you're just going to do a count. So you want a logbook that has any of these, let's just say. And then you're going to do another filter here, okay? This is going to be an and filter. And you are going to think about the implicits that you really want. So I'm willing to do implicits on, like, let's say these two maps if they have uh, radius, okay? Um, always, you just have a, a, what's this thing called? A tilde. Radius explosive, okay? Now, I think this is S tier. This is an S tier um, implicit, okay? And then next to that, maybe you want number of explosives like this, okay? So for me, I want a, I want a map implicit that has these two. Now, you can't assign these to like any of the implicits, but I'll show you in a second. Um, I'm just hit enter. And so now what you're going to do is you're only going to see these logbooks. Oh, I forgot to do this. I forgot to do this uh, area level. Make sure you do 81 plus, right? Because we know from red maps that 14 plus is where like the juice happens. So go down to area level and type in um, 81. OK, and that's it. That's all you got to do. If you want to if you're thinking about splitting, like finding things for splits so you can duplicate yours with a Fenimal Plague Ratchet, then you might want to go down here and do split. No, and maybe corrupted. No, just to be safe, right? So you do this and now look at this 30 C um, for things that have the mods and the layout that you want. Wait, someone posted the forbidden. Is that the forbidden pasta? Man, all the Chinese people just got kicked from the Internet. Damn. Uh, so what you're going to look first is you look for the banner that has the layout that you want. And then you look for the um, the faction. Now, I will say this in my hundreds of logbooks, you only don't really want to do Raj. OK. And that's because the scrap metals don't really sell that well and they're kind of low value. Aaron Gollies at the time of this video are two C each. Scrap, um, what's it called? Reroll tokens for two gin. Exotic coinage are about seven C in bulk. So, uh, and then barrel medallions are like 10 or 11 C. So you will, at the price of 30 something C, all the way up to about 60 C, uh, you can't really lose money ever just on the coins. So, you know how there's all this, this like meme of like, oh, we well, have to like trade the things. Well, just from the coinage, you will go way above the value of um, the logbook that you buy just from the coins alone, not taking any of the currencies, any of the things, scarabs, whatever, whatever thing you can sell. Okay. Nothing else but reroll tokens. So that's what makes the logbook so good. Okay. So your first glance when you're scrolling down uh, to buy these is you are going to look for the category and then the faction to make sure it's not Raj. And if it has the implicits you want, then you're just going to instantly buy that thing. For example, um, this one right here. This reef is a is a Erangali reef, right? A Gwena reef. If you ever forget which one you're in, the artifacts that drop in the map tell you which master it is. So if it's um, circles, it's going to be Gwenin. If it's um, sun artifacts, it's going to be uh, Danig. If it's if it's uh, scythes, then it's going to be Tujin, right? In case you forget when you're in the map. So look at this one. Explosive radius is insane, especially on um, on outdoor maps when you can't like really get that much. So if I see like this one explosive radius, this is already like super worth right here. OK, and you scroll down. So for me, I like whale. Um, I like whale temples, right? So when I'm scrolling down, like, look at this. Um, I might even make an exception if it's something like this, because in whale temple, it's so dense that like I have radius and number. So remember, um, most of the time, just look for layout, then faction, then look for the things that you filtered out and that's it and any i would say anything that's less than 60 c 70 c i would honestly just buy that especially if uh fenimals become if fenimals are like 0.3 then it's worth splitting as well okay so that is how to buy them okay that's just what i've noticed from from buying them you don't have to go for three implicits uh honestly one s tier implicit is good enough and the S tier, it's not muted. It's not, I can see the sound level. Guys, I can see the sound level on the screen right there. It's not muted, bro. Okay, type, 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 uh, type, uh, uh, POE leave. Type this emote here. POE leave if it's muted. Type this emote if it's muted. Type POE leave. Type POE leave. Type it right now. See? See, it's not muted, bro. It's not, it's not muted. Okay. 
that is just the preemptive like how do i get good logbooks which one should i buy okay and i guarantee you that uh a layout and a faction that you enjoy you're gonna have a, a, a better time than going off of some like spreadsheet okay so take that into account too your enjoyment of the maps don't ever do like mountainside bluffs um um what's that one temple place that's not whale temple it's like ruined temple or something it's so bad okay so yeah so that's how you buy the the things okay now let's get to the good stuff so there's there's a few ways that you can um there's a few ways that i like to approach the logbooks okay i'll go over like kind of everything here just so you guys uh have a have a comprehensive idea of I'm what what goes through my mind okay empire. so once again that's a, a raj one but it, it doesn't matter because that good implicits and uh, i just love oil temple uh yo woolsey man thanks for nine months man all right first let's talk about something like indoor versus outdoor okay uh why do i like indoor so much why do i believe that indoor is always always going to be better than outdoor for the most part let's get a lucky reef or something and that is because of density right so i'm just going to start placing things so, so we can travel through and see what we can get okay i'm going to redo this later but um as you can see uh indoor squishes everything so when you squish everything radius uh becomes more important placement range becomes less important and everything that you add to it artifacts quantity of artifacts quantity of rune monsters um they are squished into more into each explosion uh general rule of thumb is you want to get about at least two at the very minimum two um or but preferably three things inside each radius so when you're placing right so it's very easy to do that in indoor maps and sometimes it can be incredibly hard on outdoor maps okay so right here what i mean by things is i mean runic skulls which are these or chests which are these banners okay so right here there's three there's um uh there is a uh, two chests and a runic if i were to place that there okay and then if you go over here look at that that's three runics there amazing right like look at that. that's three things there so pretty good stuff you can see the density like look at this right like you can see the density of indoors is pretty amazing all right uh i'm not gonna show you an outdoor on this video because i hate outdoors there are many times where even if you get runic duplication which is the best modifier to get uh where outdoor will still give you nothing because you uh, either don't have the explosives to travel uh or you don't have the radius or you don't have like the good mods and you end up getting nothing with amazing mods and that just feels uh so bad so i guess what i'm trying to say is that um if you just look at me randomly placing things here you can see that the the overall the average of loot is so much higher on any indoor map okay than an outdoor map i would recommend not doing outdoor maps actually um if you are getting into logbooks you will not have as much fun another reason indoor uh maps are much better in my opinion is because if you look at these columns or not these aren't columns what are these called corridors so in an outdoor map you always have four directions right you can go north south east or uh uh never eat shredded wheat west okay i'm retarded so when you always have a, a picking of going a direction okay you will not you will be paralyzed by choice sometimes because if you go south you can't even see the remnants or the density that's up north okay and that's really scuffed because you might even miss out on something like runic dupes or something like that so what these indoor things do and why i love them so much is look at look at how it guides you right when i when i'm placing this way right let me just like redo everything so that this i guess this will be a longer video um when you're placing if i go if i choose to go this way there's nowhere else i can go okay what is that what is that pasta right there right i can't go anywhere i i have to go this way and like even when there's like a junction here um i can just look at what's over here right do i want to go this way or this way and it kind of the indoor map kind of pushes you along in a loop where the thought of going four directions is gone you only have to go two directions right so like you you can see you can see how like it flows like this around and then it just it just ends over here you try to get over here okay and you can also look at the map to look if there's bosses or underground areas you want to end on underground areas usually uh underground areas are about a 50 percent chance to be something uh not so good like a grotto which is usually two or three chests um or it could be something good like a uh like a uh what's the thing with sarcophagus or something because if you get a, a underground area that has monsters there will be runics in there too so anything that applies to runics will also apply to the runics in the underground area uh last and then there'll be chests too so it's a big bonus right so you always want to get underground areas if you can so uh you can see it pushes you along okay i'm gonna go over a really like sweaty strat let's say you have no idea about what you're doing and you maybe you only have like one exalt or something and you really need to juice the hell out of your 
logbook or you don't care about time right let's say you're you're just an average path of exile enjoyer and you you go you know what i don't care about efficiency i don't care about um just doing the most logbooks per hour right getting the most c per hour and that's a great way to play if you want to get really sweaty and you don't want to like miss out here's what you can do um on windows you can either window shift s which i don't do because it causes like this weird distortion on the bottom of the image i use like the snipping tool you pop out your logbook uh mini map and then you do you do this real quick you take a screenshot of this and now it's in the snipping tool right you can also put in paint if you want to do that and now what you can do is you can run around the map to scout okay so you can scout out good remnants and let's say for example uh let me find a, a good one that you might want to mark okay this this way is is like because you can't remember there's no way in hell you're gonna remember where all the good ones are okay so let's say you love uh currency or something right uh, or, or static you, lo you love statics right so right here the static you see it's right there you go right here and you can you can actually like mark it on this map right here okay you can go like this s d right if it's currency you, you can like you know you see currency for the c if it's runic dupes you just like star it right um and you can just put letters next to the remnants okay so that's what you can do if you're really sweaty now after you do all this let's say there's tactics here let's say there's a currency remnant right here let's say there's um uh, uh, more rare monsters right there so this is good if you don't care about time because you have good planning and when you see all the stuff you can go like this you go well i'm gonna go from here to here to here right obviously you wouldn't do that because there's if there's runic dupes right here you go to runic dupes first but you can draw a path and then follow that and you'll know that you're not missing anything because it's all on your map okay i did this for like a couple weeks uh until i got kind of familiar with it and, I, and i'll explain why i don't do that anymore uh but this is a very good method for um remembering where the good remnants are okay uh i'm not gonna go over like the the tiers of remnants because you can kind of find that out yourself should, should i go over tiers of remnants i guess uh just real quick maybe like runic dupes is, is s tier you need to get that's like the most important one um there's things like uh flat quantity like raw quantity on items is also i think better than uh specific currency i i even think that raw quantity is better than um like runic or chest have stacked dick currency because it applies all the time no matter how many runics or, or other things you get okay so quantity is like s tier quantity of artifacts is pretty s tier uh especially on non raj maps and then after that you know currency tactics of uh, scarabs things like that okay well scarabs might be up there if you're in reef but it's only on reef so uh that's that's how it is with that so the reason i don't do this method anymore okay is um is because of this let me just reset all my explosives so i can just walk through it on this map um the reason I don't do it anymore is because you will get very familiar with like what's good and what's not and you'll kind of know that it doesn't actually matter what uh if you miss a, a remnant or two okay what matters is that you stack enough remnants in the first half of the map that are decent and then get density density is like the key in the in the second half okay because in the first half of the logbook it's gonna be trash no matter what and in the back end you want to have enough good remnants stored up to kind of multiply um what's back there okay so right now uh i would say that runic dupes is about one in five one in four one in five uh logbooks so what that means is if you're gonna do a scouting session i don't do scouting sessions anymore either right i don't run around at the beginning of the map which you could do just to like kind of see if there's runics and the reason is that is because there's an 80 percent chance that it's not going to be there so if there's an 80 percent chance that that it's not going to matter your scouting run is a complete waste right so what i do is i just start placing for like the good the good things and the good densities and then only if i hit a runic somewhere like that's too late I will redo the entire thing so like even if i were to hit a runic like here it'd be okay right if i even if i got as far as like right here and there was like a, a runic i wouldn't restart and, and beeline it okay if i did go all the way to my last explosive and i found like a runic at the end then i would reset the whole thing okay and that's and that's happened a couple times but once again it's not gonna happen most of the time so it's a complete waste of time and you can just uh you can just start placing okay uh, uh oh quick things about um you, i don't know if you guys know this but you can like mouse over this to see if you accidentally hit something so let's say like you're like on the on the cusp right like you see you see how it lights up but let's say like you don't know if you got this runic right there you see that like that that runic has like sometimes like one pixel off if you're ever unsure on a remnant you can just mouse over right like let's say you didn't know if you like actually hit this one like the fizz damage reduction you can just mouse over and check that's another thing okay um other quick little trips about placement is that uh it's it's okay to like use two explosives 
So like, let's say I was going, uh, let me place this here. Like, let's say I was going, like you see these three runics I can get in one explosive here, right? Or like these four, I guess. Okay. So you're like, okay, I might want to get these four runics, but I also want these two chests because I have some good chest quantity or something. Um, it's okay to split it. You don't have to just go for like the most uh, things in one explosion per circle. You can split it like I can go like this. I can get like these two chests and then I can get like these runics right here, right? It, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's totally okay to split your explosives like that. Um, another thing that is that if you're in a situation where um, there's only one thing that you need to get, uh, make what what is that? That's a toucan. Make sure you get it on the edge, okay? So what I mean by that is like let's say that uh there was only you see this remnant right here runic monsters have a 50 percent chance to get currency and let's say that these things around it didn't exist it was only this remnant nothing else um and you see that the map is like this okay don't don't just slap the explosive like on top of it and then and then go on okay um when you only have one thing because of travel you have to put it on the edge okay what i mean by that is you see how like it doesn't matter if you get it by one pixel because look currency you mouse over and you have it right doesn't matter if it's literally one pixel like like ah, wait ah, ah. boom see you have it so the reason you want you want to get on the edge on a singular is because watch this if you just like slap it down you now have to use another explosive if, if you were to want to get this wall right but whereas if you if you if you put it a little bit further right you can just get the wall with that one or this is extremely important in um in low explosive or like high density later because if i put it if i put it on the edge like this right here because of the map layout, I get that much more travel distance over here, right? So you see how like the, like the range here, right? I can I can like go over here and it's it's like right there. Whereas like if you were to slap it down just on it because you're lazy, now look now look at the range. And then this it, this compounds further on. So every time you you min max it the distance like this, you could get more density later on, which is what's important because you're stacking remnants, okay? Um, and then you'll lead to less situations where you're like, oh shit, like I almost got to that thing, but I didn't. Okay, so that's that's kind of important. Okay, so um, another thing is there is terrain in certain maps that can block. So the further you push the, the distance to the next zone, the less likely that you'll get cock blocked um, by walls, doorways, uh, like little boats on the reef, like these like garbage, you know, these like terrain things like ledges, whatever. Um, okay, so another, okay, another thing is um, make sure you know where your loot is coming from. Okay, so obviously raw quantity is you don't need to think about that. But if you mouse over and you see like runic monsters, like a lot of runic stuff for like currency, um, stack decks, whatever, uh, make sure you just like prioritize that, right? So if you have nothing for chests, let's say you have like 60% uh, stacked uh, stack deck for runics and like 20% um, for chests, then obviously like if you have a situation like, hold on, let me put this over here. Like let's say you have a situation where you can get like these two chests or you can get like, you know, like let's say you had to choose between like these three runics or like these chests. Right? it'd be easier to decide that way in situations where um you'll get you'll get you might get more loot for less things in each explosive okay um in terms of things that you might not know uh about the logbooks that aren't intuitive okay um the in the intuitive stuff the non-intuitive stuff is like this i would say that I would say don't spend too much time placing. I did this for about a week where I was doing this. I was doing this on paint. Okay. I would go on paint like this. Wait, where is it? Where is it? And I go like this. I use like different colors and shit. Uh, and it would take so much time. It doesn't matter. I, I, I promise you, um, you know, if you want to play that way, fine. But the most important thing is just start placing and then see if it's good. Because you'd be surprised at how many times you start placing one direction, you just keep going towards like the, the remnants and you'll end up with something that's pretty damn good. OK, you don't need to like finesse uh, most of the things. OK, um, that's what I'll say. Uh, another thing I'll say is that um, for the monsters, OK, if you have a headhunter, uh, I would recommend if you have a build that's like dying a lot or like because logbooks are, are pretty much the hardest content right now. If you have a headhunter, what you're going to want to do is you could actually let the whole thing explode before killing anything um, if you find that you're a little bit too squishy. So explosives will always keep going. Like if I were to hit the, the detonator right here and the whole thing start exploding, all you have to do is wait. OK, and the reason you might want to do that is because all the rares will be spawned. Uh, if you if you keep going on every explosive, it's kind of slow. Uh, also, don't loot that much. OK, looting actually kills your stacks. 
So you will you will stack up every rare and you'll be able to like pretty much chain clear the map if you just like wait a little bit with like all the buffs. Whereas you might lose the buffs on some of the uh some of the other things. Okay. So that's one thing you could try. Explosives go off. I'm pretty sure they go off even if you're in like an underground area. I'm pretty sure they go off in town. I think I, I, I'm not I'm not 100 sure about that. I'm pretty sure about that though. Uh, so if you like went back to town for some reason to do a trade, the explosives are still going off. Okay. Other things stacking on bosses. So there was a patch that said something about bosses not being affected by remnants. Uh, that is just simply not true. Okay. I don't know what the wording was, but it's just not true. Uh, if you ever get a boss, okay. Uh, and the way to know that there's a boss is a random chance, probably like a one in five chance when you do any, um, logbook to be a boss or it might say it on the implicit in that case make sure you split it make sure to do it last if you can because the difference is crazy uh if you kill a verona first as like the first explosive or with no remnants she'll drop probably 11 coins probably around 11 coins uh if you do her last with all the good remnants and stuff she'll drop like 30 something coins sometimes right uh on astragani's i've got i've gotten like 52 i think 52 astragani and stuff from a medved so try to put it last if you can they will get the buffs for example if you get regen they will regen if you get things like uh always hit you can't evade they will hit you every time if you get always monsters always crit they will crit you every single time uh if you get things like um the monster is immune to certain things right that works that works for the monster just know that Okay, so some people, I, I see some people in the chat sometimes, they say like, hey, I thought remnants didn't apply. They do apply. It might be a bug. I don't know. They might change that in the future, but they do apply. That's why you get so many more um, of the currencies. So try to do that last um, if you can. Okay, um, so what, what else do I need to talk about? I think that's it, right? Oh, let me just do this one. I'll just like do this logbook regularly. So and I'll walk through like, like what I'm doing. So like people, people that watch this YouTube video will be like, oh, okay, I understand. So see, first I look at the map and I go, there's more remnants over here in a denser area than over here, right? And this will be like, this will become like, like a split second decision for you when you come in. So I'm going to go to the left, even though the, the underground is on the left. I know that this area, just from doing a lot of whale temples, this area is going to be shit in terms of like, you know, probably right. So I'm going to go left. So right here, like there's gem and gem, not that, not that great. Right. But there is density. See one chest, three runics. Okay. I'm gonna do this one kind of slow. Cause I'm gonna have to like talk through all my decisions. Um, and these two prefixes don't really matter for me. Uh, runic monsters regen. It could be a hundred percent regen. Uh, I'm an Aki, right? So they literally can't regen. Um, also if you look at things like, um, runic duplicates, just know it's a prefix. It's blue text, not, not this whitish text. Just, just in case you guys didn't know that. Okay. So we're gonna go over here. So, uh, this, right here, I'm gonna get these, these two things here because I can't travel anymore. It's always good to like, to like do a little bounce to test the, the range of your, of your thing. So right here, like, let's say, um, let's say I want that gem, right? I can't get that gem. So I'm going to go for like as much density as I can before it. Okay. And then this one's good. Uh, we have a wall right here. Now you don't want to put it here because look, you want to maximize your travel distance. So you don't need to actually hit the wall, right? Look, you just need it to glow. So if I do this, I've saved myself. Um, like if I do this, right, I say I might, you might even miss this currency. And you have to like do this, but I'm going to min max this distance. And now I got all this. And then over here, like, do I want this gem? See, like, also don't try to put the uh, explosive into like the, the abyss because it doesn't hit anything, right? You want to like maximize your, your coverage, right? And it's also good if like, if you, there's a lot of immunities you can't do, just, just sometimes glance over this icon to make sure you didn't hit your immunity, right? So here, I like this, um, these two shrines right here. Uh, and shrines don't give quantity or any bonuses or any loot. They're just like, they make it easier. So that's like three good chests, two runics. Uh, so I will take, I'll take that, right? And then, so this area here, we look at the density. Now this is very good density because if you look here, I get a wall, three runics uh, or two runics, a chest and uh, an oil. Okay. So then we go over here. There's another wall that's already gotten. We're going to go this way. See, I, I, this one, I couldn't go any further, right? So because I can't go any further this way, I'm going to put it like here so I can get like a couple more like stray monsters. Okay. Look at this one, like here. I don't want to like go into the abyss. So I'm going to put it as far because the map automatically pushes me this way. I want to go like this. Okay. And then I'm going to see like, did I get the, the underground? The underground also has a massive radius of its own. So if you don't like, if you don't hit it immediately, don't worry about it. Um, one quick thing about the undergrounds, you don't have to hit it immediately. Cause if, if I go this way, I instantly hit it. It doesn't get any remnants. Right. But if I go around it like this, I get all the remnants that'll apply. If there, if this is like a fortified redoubt, uh, if it's a, you know, not, not anything, but like a grotto or some shit. Right. So let's see, do I want like, look at this density right here. 
So this density is, uh, that's five. Yeah, that's five. Wait, four runics and like two chests, right? Amazing. And I get, this is the, the best, um, remnant in my opinion, just raw quantity for monsters. Okay. And I have nine left. So I got the underground. Wait, I didn't get the underground, but I'm going to get this right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I don't care about that density there. And then I'm going to go back this way. And then this one's like a stack day. So I want that. So I'm going to get it on the edge. And now I have all this. And then I go over here and I have, I have good density. You can see like I get that runic right there. So that's like five runics and two chests. Amazing. Uh, what's over here? Uh, essence. Yeah, it's all right. I'll get this. And then we go over here. See, like this is my travel range. So I can like, sometimes it'll like jump randomly where you might be able to get something else. But for the most part of this one, I want, I'll just take... Yeah, I'll just take this. Get over here. And then... I've got some currency here and a wall. I'll take that. And then I'll go over here. I'll grab... Cannot be crits. I don't want that one. I'll grab this density. I got one left. And I'll just take this. All right. And then, so that's it. That's it. Right? And that's how I did it. See, I missed a lot of stuff, but don't worry about the stuff you, you, you missed because uh, this is another reason I love indoor maps because I've checked every remnant on this half of the map on the left side. Uh, when I run back to the explosive, I can check for uh, runic dupes, right? That I missed. See, like, I, I don't care if I miss anything but runic dupes. So as I'm running back, I'm naturally scouting the rest of the map, right? Oh, there was nothing good. I'm totally fine. So you, you know, 100%, you know, for 100% chance that you didn't miss anything that um, that would have caused you to reset and go over here. Oh, one quick thing. One quick thing um, to, to replace your explosives. Mine's like shift four, but yours is probably shift V. Um, if you ever like play something and you notice that you could have gotten one more thing. It's it, it's worth to get that one thing. Trust me on this, okay? Because especially on the back end, because you have all the runic stacking. So like, where's my last one right here? So like, let's say I place it like this, right? Like I, I'm just like being quick because I'm lazy. I go, I go, bam. But then I notice I could have gone more and I missed this one. It's okay. Just hit shift, shift V and just go like that, right? So like, let's say you're, you're right here. You can't see what's up there. You're like, oh, okay. So you're like, oh, I want to get that chest and that runic. And then, you, and then now you're going back to explode. And you're like, oh, wait, there's stuff here. Just like quickly redo it and then place it once that that half second you spend to replace the explosive is worth it okay trust me on this because even little monsters on the back end can be very juicy okay just do that real quick okay so that's why so what well, this took a long time but like if i was if i was not explaining i was just placing it would have been a lot faster right so then you do a quick scout there's no there's no like uh no crits there's no uh, immune to the the types that i'm doing damage of and you just hit it and then you start popping off okay so um you can open chests on the way, I guess, but I would really recommend if you're starting out, just start killing stuff. You don't want to get behind and get one shot from all screen, right? You see how I'm kind of ahead of the thing, but the moment I start here, I'll start looting and you'll see how far behind I fall, right? If I loot everything on the, um, that, that drops on the way. And my filter is pretty strict, okay? So, um, here we go. So I'm opening chests, right? Cause I'm like, ooh, what, what could that chest be? But I would recommend when you start out, do not loot until the end. In fact, even hide your items, maybe. If you hide your items, it'll be much easier to see, right? Yeah, grab these uh, these shrines. That gives me a boatload of damage. But uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you what happens when you loot. Especially if you loot a forgotten grotto, you're gonna lose all your juice. And if you lose like charges and stuff, you're, you're gonna be in a in a world of pain later on, maybe, right? So look, I'm I'm looting, and now you can see what's happening, right? When I when I loot with my my pretty strict filter. The mobs are now like they're all juiced, right? They can add more auras to each other. They're they're more packed up. They can shoot through a doorway. If you get some uh, Tujin uh, Arbalast, they're gonna they're gonna do some crazy shit to your butt. Okay, they're gonna they're gonna fist your ass, and that is not fun. So like I see a forgotten grotto, right? Very tempting to go down here and start grabbing loot. Okay, but now look, I'm small. I'm very small, and when I come out, there's a chance I get like I get booty blasted. So it's okay not to loot until the end, okay? Or if you find that you have a full inventory, don't don't go to town, okay? When you have a full inventory, keep fighting mobs because there's a chance you die and you get a free go back to town, okay? Like, you see how far behind I fell? All right, look at that. Look at that. I'm so far behind, whereas like if I pushed and didn't loot, I would all these things would be dead. They'd be spawning like 50 at a time instead of like having to fight hundreds of these things. So now, um, one quick way, if you don't know if there's still mobs left, you do a slash remaining... Okay, there's two monsters remaining. And at the end, even a Roa can kill you. Like a white Roa, uh, you know, if they bleed you and you're unaware and you start like running around, uh, they could kill you. So if it's important to you, maybe you clear it to zero. I have no idea where that mob is. But I'm pretty sure I'm not going to die. So now I'm just going to start looting, right? And at this point, um, 
I didn't have a full inventory. But if I was looting back there, I would have a full inventory. But just always kill first before going back to town. You never know what's going to happen. You could DC, get a free go back to town card. All right, you could get killed. And that sends you back to town. Um, you never know, right? You might drop like a mirror and you want to like just drop like these alterations and pick up the mirror. Uh, so you, you never know what's going to happen. So always just keep going until the end, until everything's clear. Then uh, you loot, okay? So that's uh, that's pretty good. Let's talk about group play for these. Uh, I've done a lot of these with the boys uh, in chat. We've done a lot of group play. Uh, quantity does scale. It doesn't scale itemize things. For example, if you have 100% scarab from a runic or a chest and you have six people, you're not going to get two and a half scarabs each time or like three and a half scarabs each time, whatever. See, like, oh, see right here. This mob is hard, right? That blue mob is very tough. So now it's now it's zero monsters remain. See? Okay, so now when zero monsters remain, you're completely safe to loot. Um, group play is very OP. In terms, I believe it affects like things like, um, I believe it affects artifacts. I'm not 100% sure, but there is way more loot in group play in here. It's crazy because, um, oh, I already this. Uh, one thing that's not unusual from my group play sessions on stream is that I will have, even with six people in here and it's free for all loot, if you look right here, free for all loot so people can yoink everything, I will still have the same inventory. It's so much. It's so much loot. So if you want to play with your friends, I recommend it, right? Uh, maybe map owner, like you have a rule where map owner gets the mirror that drops or map owner gets all the reroll tokens. Uh, I don't do anything like that, but you could. You still don't lose money. How crazy is that? You, you can invite six people to yo and call your loot. You still don't lose money. If, if you're, if, unless you're a slow clicker, you're playing on console or something. <laughs> console. Uh, no one's, ain't nobody playing on console. Um, so that's one thing to say. L uh, group play, very rewarding. Um, you won't feel like you're losing that much even if you have five other people stealing your loot, not contributing, right? So the way I do it is like, I invite five people, they can steal everything uh, except for the mirror, right? They can take all the coins and I'm, I'm a pretty fast looter. So I, I always make back the cost of the logbook and, and most of the time more, even with five yoinkers, okay? So like right now I'm I'm full, right? So th like right here, I know there's no monsters. I'll go back to town because I have five portals. So that's uh, that's something about group play. Uh, what else do I need to go over guys? Is there is there anything I missed in this video? Is the video over? Is that it for the video? What else did I not explain? That's it. That's it. I'm gonna go back in. Oh, can I turn off this music now? I don't think I missed anything, right? Orbot? Uh, you don't. You don't need an orbot. I mean, it is hard. It is very hard. But I don't think you need an orbot. You missed when all the group died. Do I know about bosses and stuff? I should talk about bosses. Nah, there's like boss guides and stuff. You need to redo and wait for a lava with good loot. I don't know, man. I think, uh, I mean, this was a Raj one, right? I, I said that at the beginning. Oh, Nook's crown. How much is that? 50C. Wow. I gotta do baiters. Okay, let's, let's, let's pause the, um, let's take, get rid of this. And then where's the, where's the YouTube video? Copyright. Okay, okay, that's okay. So that that's my that's my video, guys. That's my video, guys. Thanks for watching my video. Bye, bye, guys. Bye.